We need to begin this video with just a bit of an explanation about what I'm trying to do with this review specifically. I love the Judgment series so freaking much, so in order to try and do this video, I decided to play every single aspect of this game pretty much entirely. I've done every mini game. I've done a ton of the side quests, I tried to max out every single skill tree, I even did the detective dog missions, which yes, is actually a thing that exists. And I did it because I wanted to try and make the very best Lost Judgment review in the entire universe, so I sincerely hope you enjoy this. What's up, Gabriel Streamcast Guy here, and this is my honest review for Lost Judgment. In case you've never tried it, Judgment is a spin-off series of the Yakuza franchise. Now, if you haven't tried that, the Yakuza games are essentially these, like, Japan simulators. They are these massive, open-world games with hundreds and hundreds of things to do, from arcade games to side quests to just completely silly stuff that's off the wall, like gigantic missions of trying to besmirch the honor of different people around these digital cities. Now, the Judgment games feel very different from Yakuza Yakuza because in Yakuza, you're playing as the Japanese Mafia. You are trying to do stuff that's a little bit less reputable in this gigantic seedy underworld. Where in these games, in Judgment, you're playing as a lawyer, or I guess I should say an ex-lawyer. Yagami, just a couple years back, used to be a very famous defender of the law. He was somebody that just dedicated his entire life to making sure that justice was sought, until eventually there was a case that popped up, it got really, really messy, he ended up just stepping away from his duties in the courtroom to instead become this private detective, somebody that could still help people find justice, but in a very different way. Now, the first game was gory, it was crazy, it was very, very great, but the focus in the sequel is very different. Now, let's start things off by just talking about the combat and the gameplay, because I think that's what most people are the most interested in. Yagami is a martial arts master. This guy not only can he completely kick butt, not only is he able to flip off walls and do some crazy takedowns, he's actually mastered different martial arts stances. During the course of this game, you're going to get into a ton of fights. Walking down the streets, people will challenge you to duels. And pretty much every side quest ends with having to pound some people in the face in order to try and redeem some sort of lost item. I mean, almost every single aspect of this game revolves around the very, very intense combat. Now, in this game, you have multiple stances, like tight and snake that have different specialty uses, things where basically you could do more attacks that are more widespread. An open stance can make you better trying to deal with different hits from different directions, whereas doing something like specifically the snake stance, this makes it where you could do faster, less powerful strikes, but it also lets you do things like takedowns when people are on the ground and even force people into submission. You can actually scare people into quitting the fight. Now, what else makes this combat so fun is the fact that there is weapons all over the place. Perhaps what's most famous about the Yakuza series when it comes to these street brawls is the fact that anything is a weapon, from chairs to motorcycles to baseball bats. I mean, anything that can't be picked up can easily be turned into a weapon itself, but this goes along with the fact that just your bare hands is still a very deadly use of force. You have a lot of different things like power attacks, counters, and grabs, but what really makes this the most fun is that fights are very situational. Situational. Depending on where you're at, you can try and just corner somebody in an alley, you can do things like throw people off bridges. I love the fact that there's just so many tons of tiny animations that are specifically made for these crazy circumstances that you somehow find yourself in again and again. Now, personally, part of the reason I am just so utterly obsessed with Judgment and Yakuza is because of the side activities. The combat itself is great, actually going in here and doing these street fights, getting a paycheck, trying to protect the innocent is incredibly fun, but I love all the weird hijinks that take place in these cities that we get a chance to explore. Now, in this game, we have two separate towns to go through, a Jincho, which I'm probably mispronouncing, and Kamarucho. Now, I'm totally slaughtering these names, even though I hear them just constantly, because I'm terrible at speaking Japanese. But these games are fully voiced in English, but sometimes these words are still difficult because
because I am a dumbass. But anyways, so here's the way it works. While you're walking up and down these streets, you're going to be able to encounter different citizens that need your help. But you can also do stuff like just go into random buildings. Cafes have full abilities to sit down and eat, have a meal. You can get drunk in a bar with your friends. Or my favorite thing is the tons of side activities. This has fully detailed fully playable arcades with loads of different games from different eras, including classic Sega games, updated stuff like the new Virtual Fighter, or even really weird stuff. You can walk into an arcade and play Sonic Fighters. I cannot believe I exist in a world where I can walk into a digital arcade and play one of the strangest Sonic games that's ever existed. But for Lost Judgments, they really decided to take this idea of goofy playable stuff even further, because you can do stuff like drone races and stuff, but you can also now go back to your house. There is a Sega Master System at your house now that is fully playable. While you're doing different activities or just doing some of the main quests, you occasionally encounter these special cartridges which you can take back and are fully functional and fully playable inside of Lost Judgment. Now to go with this more digital entertainment, there is also just the choice of doing more classic arcade experiences like darts, there's crane games, there's also weird stuff like they've added in rooftop golf to put it quite simply, this is just a staggering amount of side content that's completely optional, that is so freaking fun, and is hidden in every single quarter of this map. Every single spot has something fun to explore, to learn, and to try and do. Now let's talk about that dog detective stuff. This is one of the things they've decided to add specifically into Lost Judgment. And to be honest, it's funny, but it's not something I did very much. At a certain point in the main story, pretty deep into the game itself, you discover this detective dog who's able to sniff out clues. Now, you do need him for certain quests, but for the most part, you kind of just have an optional thing where whenever you want, you can take the dog and take him for a walk, and he sniffs out special treasure, which seems to be just randomly spawned. He pulls you along, you kind of just follow his lead. It's not particularly deep, but it is a fun little side activity that does sometimes give you some very good rewards. In fact, one of the things I like about this game is that Earning money still feels great. Getting a chance to fight people gives you a couple bucks, but actually helping out different citizens can give you some gigantic cash rewards, which you can then buy better crafting items to make better potions, better gear because you want to try and upgrade your character themselves. There's constantly these different paths on how you want to play Lost Judgment. Now I want to talk a bit about the main story, and then I want to talk about the side quests. I mostly liked the main story in this. I will say that the writing is probably some of the most polished when it comes to just general universe stuff. I think the conversations are very realistic. A lot of the encounters are very, very well voiced. My problem is just that the stakes this time around, the intensity, the fear in this game feels a lot lower than it was in the original Judgment. Now, to put this very clearly, I do not want to spoil it. I'm not going to talk about any of the gigantic twists, because those are very, very well handled. My problem is that this time around, the loose idea is that you're trying to solve a series of very cryptic problems at this local high school, which means that a lot of the early storyline is spent hanging out at a classroom of just kind of going back and forth, going in, questioning teachers, getting into fist fights with bullies over and over again, trying to creep around on rooftops, or sometimes just like doing stuff like attending a dance class. Now, the problem with this is that it's still fun, but it doesn't feel as exciting. It doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, I have to solve this problem or the bodies are going to pile up. Because this is just some high school drama with a couple freaking bad parts to it, it feels much lower stakes. It much more feels like, all right, if I spend six weeks playing arcade games, no one's really going to die from this. This is just not a gigantic threat. Whereas in the first game, in the original Judgments, I felt like I had to finish the main quest because people were getting their eyes gouged out of their freaking skulls with a freaking rusty spoon. This time around, things are still bad. There are still a couple like deaths that are being investigated, but it feels much more chill. 
When it comes to detective games and trying to do some very good cyber sleuthing and stuff, I mean, one of my favorite aspects of games like this is the pressure of it. The fact that you alone have to solve these problems. Whereas in this game, I think that's part of the problem of it is the fact that it's just high school. Like, this is two gigantic cities that you get a chance to explore throughout the course of this game, and you spend so much of the early chapters going around these tiny blank holes hallways and just trying to do stuff like doing these investigation mini games of trying to search like a teacher's desk for one more clue. Now to me, it's not that this is boring, it just feels so much more toned down from the insanity of the first game that feels a little bit like whiplash. Now, I don't think this is bad. I just think that it's a different tone that you need to be ready for. It's definitely a different set of circumstances that are actually motivating Yagami to try and sort this gigantic new mess that he's managed to find himself in. This main quest still manages to have some absolute highlights, some truly glorious moments that I'm glad managed to have a lot of payoff and a lot of very, very good setup. But where I think I probably had even more enjoyment was the side quests. There is just so many completely bonkers scenarios that play out. Like, I found a side quest where I was trying to investigate the Arachnid Man, who's basically like a knockoff Spider-Man, and then people start thinking, you're Spider-Man, it is a gigantic freaking mess. There's also things like, somebody's trying to find a haunted ramen shop, which mysteriously appears at midnight. There are so many just funky new quests that are so fun to try and solve, and part of the way these work now is that you have this app that's on your phone that lets you track certain keywords. Your friend who's a computer whiz has set this up and it lets you essentially investigate by just searching for vague crimes. You can put in something like tricycle or bike or whatever the heck and try and figure out who's talking about finding something specifically. Now this is a very interesting idea and from a writing standpoint it essentially breaks down to basically letting you kind of figure out your correct path into these very open-ended mysteries. It's kind of exciting to see like how Yagami is dealing with these crimes in 2020 in a very 2021 fashion. I really kind of appreciate that. This game has an incredible amount of depth, but I feel like where the writing shines most, where I feel like the best dialogue appeared was a lot of times in these funky weird side quests. To me, if anything, you could get to like chapter 5, which is, you know, pretty early on in the game, and just once you have the ability to fast travel between these two cities, just start to explore, just help people out, just make your own story, and it is easily worth the freaking price. I seriously loved this game from beginning to end, and even the slower parts of the story in the middle and the times where I was waiting for the shoe to drop, even the slowest, darkest moments of this game are so freaking bright. They're so freaking good. This is a game that I'm critical of just because I really appreciate what they're doing with it. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad. Let's go over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Lost Judgment a 9 out of 10. Thank you everybody for watching these videos, for sharing them, for giving them likes, and for subscribing. It's crazy the fact that I get to review such crazy fun games that are so deep and so freaking insane. I love you guys. I owe you guys everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So please, do me the biggest favor of all, and I'm dead serious about this. Keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.